Question number four. Now here you will get an opportunity to use the buy and force for variable density. Now what does it say? A hot air balloon you know carries some passengers and certain amount of sandbags and the total mass initially is 480 kg and the mass of one each sandbag is 1 kg and the effective volume for buoyancy that's capital V. So all these informations have been given and initially the balloon is floating at a height of 100 meter you could see here. So let me just make a quick representation of the whole statement it's something like this. This is the balloon at a height of 100 meter above the ground and the volume is of course V and let's see what's the total mass initial is 480 kg. So right here the weight at this particular thing is 480 g. Now what does it say let's try to understand further when n number of sandbags are thrown out so of course the balloon would get lighter and because the density is variable if the density was constant then on you know lightening the balloon in that case that would constantly move forward with acceleration but right now it goes up to a new height 150 meter and there it finds its equilibrium. The final volume has to be taken as same and on the basis of that we need to calculate the value of n how many number of sand bags had been removed. So it is something like this see it goes and finds equilibrium at 150 meter and where are you going to include this right here the expression of density you could see h the initial position there you will put as 100 and later on the value of h you will put it as 150 meter and you could see the value of h naught that's fixed 6000 meter that's a constant. Now here what would be the weight that is going to be 480 minus n because one bag weighs 1 kg so n bags would be weighing n kg so you subtract it multiplied by g. So all you need to do is that you need to equate the weight with the up thrust the new weight with the new up thrust and a very slight amount of calculation is going to involve not much difficult like if you see initially that is going to be 480 g equals to volume into density at 100 meter multiplied by g and there you have to plug h as 100 and now what is going to be the situation that is going to be 480 minus of n multiplied by g equals to v density at 150 meter multiplied by g you just divide it little bit of exponent calculation which is not at all difficult the value of n comes out to be 4. Now let me go with the next question. The next question you know this is quite a nice one it will involve a little bit of calculation let us see. Now it is something like this there is a point charge Q of mass M suspended by a string of length L. So initially this you know string was here and the point charge Q length of course that is given as L. And what happens is something like this you go through the question there is a dipole which is brought towards Q from infinity and if the dipole is brought from infinity towards the given point the point charge is going to get deflected away and the final equilibrium position is given there. Now based on that we need to find the total work done and we need to report the answer in terms of n multiplied by mgh. So we got to find the value of n essentially we need to calculate the work done. I will show the figure but an additional sentence has been given here. So basically the sentence is all about Lamy's theorem the equilibrium condition has been specified here. Okay, now let us see this is the given condition the charge initially was there now the charge has reached this position and finally the dipole comes here. It involves little amount of geometry and all those things. Now say this is alpha 
So, quite obviously this angle and this angle they form isosceles. So, that will be 90 minus of alpha by 2 each that is a very straightforward one and this is going to be alpha by 2 right. Okay, now what is the free body diagram at the final position? So, let me show this is mg and after that you find this is the tension T and here is the electrostatic repulsion force between the dipole and the point charge. So, let me show calculation step by step you know bit by bit we need to move. First of all if I want to calculate the value of F e now that is quite simple that will be equals to Q times electric field that is due to the dipole and the dipole's electric field you know that is Q into 2 k p because that is the axial position for the dipole divided by distance cube. So, that is going to be 2 L sin alpha by 2 whole cube. So, that is a first condition we calculated the electrostatic force. Second let me use Lamy's theorem for that I will be requiring certain angles and that is quite not a problem. Let us try to see you know the angle if I want to calculate I will just make a small amount of construction here ok. So, this is the line that I will extend and now you could see here calculating the angle would not be a trouble ok. This is alpha by 2 this is 90 right. So, clearly this angle would also be 90 minus of alpha by 2 that is what we can see and this is already 90 minus alpha by 2 and further you can see 90 minus alpha by 2 and that is 90 minus alpha by 2. So, this particular angle will be alpha or you could have also taken the parallel one it is all up to you and then the next angle let us see how much is this particular angle going to be let us write. So, this is 90 minus alpha by 2 and plus of alpha. So, 90 plus alpha by 2 therefore, this angle will be 90 minus alpha by 2 is not it. All right. So, that is done and effectively one more angle is required this particular angle. Now, this forms a straight line 90 minus alpha by 2. So, this angle has to be 90 plus alpha by 2 that is done now. All the required calculation has been done. Now, let us use the Lamy's theorem right here. The first equation comes as T divided by you see this is T this is mg and this is the electrostatic force. So, I require this angle. So, that is going to be sin 90 plus alpha by 2 the opposite angle that is equals to. Now, here mg the mg opposite angle is this complete. So, that will be equals to mg divided by this complete angle ok and there this is alpha 90 minus alpha by 2. So, that means 90 plus alpha by 2 back again the same value. So, this also has been done and what is remaining now the electrostatic force and that is equals to F e divided by the electrostatic force I will be requiring this angle and 90 minus alpha by 2 90 minus alpha by 2. So, that is going to be 180 minus alpha. So, not so much of tedious sin 180 minus alpha. So, we have done the Lamy's calculation and let me call this as equation 1, let us call this as equation 2, let me just generate and now what we will do is that let us calculate the final potential energy of the system. The final potential energy would comprise of the gravitational potential energy plus the electrostatic potential energy. And if I talk about the gravitational one that is equals to mgh with respect to the ground and the electrostatic is going to be charge q multiplied by potential due to the dipole and that is going to be k p divided by r square where this distance is r and that is 2 l 
sin alpha by 2 whole square kp cos 0 by r square. So, these are the three equations. Yes, a little bit of calculation is required there, but very simple trigonometric it will come and that work done is in fact equals to the final potential energy because finally the kinetic energy is 0. So, you calculate the work done you will get as 2 mgh. So, the value of n is going to be 2. So, that was about the question here we discussed. Now, let us go to the next one. The next one, now this is again a uh, calculative one. Lot many times in examination hall you find back to back question which demands lots of calculation, but that should never demotivate you. If things are not going as per your plan, you know you just start scanning it forward. You would find questions where your strength lies. So, that is the art you need to apply. Right here, let us see what does the question say. There is a thermally isolated cylinder closed vessel of height 8 meter. Okay, so, here is the case that is 8 meter and then let us see it is divided into equal parts by a diathermic frictionless partition of mass 8.3 kg. So, here is that mass 8.3 kg and initially this distance is 4 meter, this distance is 4 because that is it the partition divides into equal volume and this piston is diathermic that means the temperature of these two compartments would be maintained same because of the conductivity of the piston all right. Now, let us move further what does it say. Now, after that each of the two parts of the vessel contains 0.1 mole of ideal gas at 300 Kelvin. So, this is the situation number of mole is 0 0.1, the temperature is 300 Kelvin that has been given. Now, let us move. The partition is now released. So, once the partition is released, it is going to fall down because initially both sides have the same pressure, but due to its weight, it will fall down. So, that is quite expected and let us see, all right. Another important thing is that the vessel is isolated that means no heat exchange will happen between the gas and the outer surrounding. Between the gases the heat exchange will happen there. Now, let us see what is the situation. Now, the partition is released and moves without any gas leaking from one part to the other. So, as it moves there is no leakage of gas. And when equilibrium is reached, we need to calculate distance of the partition from the top. So, later on this is going to come down and we need to calculate distance of the partition from the top. So, what I will do is that finally, let us consider that this is the situation. Finally, let us say the partition comes here okay. and what would be the distance? let me call this particular distance as x. So, finally, I will have to calculate the value of 4 plus x because we need to calculate the distance of this partition from the top. Okay. Eventually, you know the temperature on both sides that will be same, but again it requires a very proper and a patient solving. Initially, what was the pressure? Let us say the pressure initially is going to be P naught, if I say that is a pressure which will be same on both sides, into volume that will be 4A number of mole which is 0 0.1 into R and temperature is 300. So, that is the initial situation that can be easily understood. Now, that was the initial point. Finally, okay, let us say both sides have temperature T each. So, let us try to write that how can the equation be written. So, that is about equation number 1. Finally, let me say the pressure up is P1, pressure down is P2. So, what can I write? I will be writing P1 multiplied by 4 plus x into A will be equals to 0 0.1 RT that is equation 2 
and pressure down is going to be P2 into 4 minus Xa is equal to 0 0.1 RT and that is equation number 3. So, these are the three equations that we have got. One more we require and that is because now it is an equilibrium. So, just try to understand P1A the force in the downward direction plus 8.3 G is the weight of the piston and that will be balanced by the weight from the lower compartment P2 into A equation number 4. And eventually just try to understand if I consider the entire gas as a system, you know there is no heat exchange from the system to the surrounding and vice versa. So, if I take both the gases as a system, you know Mg will be doing the work and if we simply visualize from energy point of view, now that is going to be a bit beautiful one just try to say. Initially how much was the energy let us say 0 0.1 multiplied by Cv multiplied by 300 multiplied by 2 is the initial internal energy of the total gas we have multiplied by 2 and Cv because it is given ideal. So, you know that is a straightforward convention that we take we go with monoatomic that is the initial internal energy and Mg will also do the certain amount of work and to simplify your calculation M has been given as 8.3 kg similar to R which is 8.3 and that will be equals to the final internal energy. So, what is the final internal energy? So, that is going to be 0 0.1 Cv multiplied by T the final temperature of both side that is going to be T all thanks to the diathermic wall of one side the other side the number of moles is still same. So, multiplied by 2 equation number 5. I agree there is a little amount of calculation involved and when you solve this you would get the value of x very close to 2, but then we have to calculate the length from the top. So, 4 plus 2 that is going to be 6. So, 6 is the correct option for this. Here you go. All right, let us move to the next one.